Release the Kraken! Greetings fellow game designers, Ron here at Lame Duck Studios. And today I'm going to be answering a question uh, on the Unreal forums, um, which is, how can I have my character stand still in a moving vehicle? Um, and kind of look, look over this question. I did answer the question um, right here, but um, I want to do something a little bit more thorough. So uh, this individual has a scenario, uh, uh, Awesome Robin uh, has a scenario where he has a character inside of a train car or a cabin, and he wants uh, the cabin to be able to move um, using a spline or some other you know direction. But with the player in there, he doesn't want the player to move. Um, so, so you can see he wants to move along a spline. Um, and his problem is the character, whenever the cabin moves forward, the character also moves forward. Now, I made the assumption, uh, I can't really read his code here, it's kind of blurry. Um, even when I blow it up, it's not really that great. My eyes are not terrific, so it's kind of hard for me to see everything that's going on. But I get the impression that he is trying to match the player's uh, speed or position to the cart. Um, so what I'm going to do is kind of replicate this in a crude fashion and kind of answer the question here. And um, Awesome Robin, just to re reiterate my point, sometimes you don't really need to do any of this stuff. So my first question up here is, um, does the cabin have to move? Uh, because in a lot of games, you can simulate motion uh, and have the player inside of the cabin. And since the player's not going to ever be outside of the cabin, all of the environmental stuff can be moving around the cabin, and then the player is free to move inside it without having to do any spe anything special. Um, the next one down here is, is the player riding the train uh, or riding the cabin? Which is like maybe the cabin's part of a, a vehicle in this case, like you're, you're riding a motorcycle, you're riding a jet ski, you're riding a car. Um, in that case, the player controller would take control of the uh, vehicle, and then the player would be, um, the player character would then be attached to the vehicle as a socket. And you know, they would just be you know, in the position of riding the vehicle or you know, driving the car or whatever the position is. And then you would, you would transfer that back when the ride is finished. Um, and then the third one is, you know, my third question is what happens uh, if you were to press play uh, without doing anything to the player? And because Unreal is actually pretty smart about a lot of these situations, you can make a platform, do nothing special, and the player will ride the platform, which I'll show you in just a minute. Um, so what would I do? Well, I would either make the player a child of the object, which is kind of what we're doing here. Um, so when the player's riding a vehicle, they're a child of the object, they're pinned to it. Um, but if you want the player to be able to move around or whatever, you'd run into some collision things because child objects do not behave uh, with the collision of the parent. They kind of ignore each other unless you do something special. The other option is if you want the player to be able to move around the cabin, um, then you want to set like an offset position or whatever. So we're going to take a look at that. Uh, right here. I set up a very crude situation. I've got the cabin here. Uh, this is a blueprinted object. If I open that up, you can see it is built in a blueprint. Okay, you can see all the items here. And then I'm not using a spline in this case, I'm just using target points, but it does the same thing. So I've got you know four target points out here, and this will move in a circle. Okay. So if I hit play, there's the cabin moving around. I'll just wait for it to get back to me. I'll jump on. And like I said, Unreal's pretty smart, so I don't have to actually do anything. My character is free to move around. If I don't move, you know, he'll move with it, whatever. I don't have to tell the player to follow the cabin. I don't have to tell the cabin to update the player's location. It figures that out for me because of the physics engine. I don't have to do anything. I can just kind of walk around. And this works just fine. Okay. Yay. Now if you want the player to be a part of the cabin, you can see when I jump, because I'm no longer on it, 
it behaves like physics would. You know, I still have the momentum of the thing that I was moving in. Now, if you want the character to be a part of the cabin, I'm going to just nuke this one, and I'll bring in my other one here. Let me grab this location point. I'll just make sure this is at the same location. Now, in this case, um, I don't have the cabin just moving. I have it waiting for me to get on board. As soon as I get on board, it snaps me to the center. You can see I can, I can try running all day, nothing happens. But it's forcing me to be locked to the center. And the cabin moves, and when the ride's over, I'm allowed to move and I can walk away. So that's a couple different ways that I would do it. Um, and I'll go over the breakdown of how this is kind of working. You can see I jump, and now when I jump, I don't float because I'm having um, my position locked to the position of the cabin. Okay, now right there, that's where it releases me. Now I'm able to walk around, so I just kind of was able to float. So we'll take a quick look at how both of these work. Uh, the first platform is very simple. I just have it set up. Um, first thing I do is I get all of my target points and I store that into a variable called target point. You can see it's up here. Um, you can do the same thing with your spline. Um, I have a custom event to update which target point I'm lo looking at. In the very beginning I get the location of my um, of my cabin. So this is a this is my cabin here that we're inside or my platform. I get that location. That's my starting point. Um, and then I check the location of my target locations. Okay. And then for my current target location, right here, my little variable, I have that set to one because the starting. Um, not that you need to have target points, but if you're using tar target points, my first target point is target point zero. Okay, that's the first one in my array. So I want to start on my second one, which would be target point one, because the arrays go zero, one, two, three, four, whatever. Arrays always start at zero. So, so you can see the first element in the array would be zero, second would be one, and so on, so on. So since my first one, I'm already there, I'm just having it look at the next one in the row. So I'm saying start at one, which would be starting um, here. So then I get the location of that, and then I have a timeline. So my timeline is very simple. It just one point to the next uh, at start. I'm at a time of zero and a value of zero. And then however long I want this to be, I'm at two seconds here. So at the end of two seconds, I have my time, two seconds, and then my value, which is one, which is 100% of the travel distance from point to point. And that gets lerped. It takes my uh, position, it lerps my start position to my target location, and that goes to my uh, set actor location. So that just moves the cabin. You have pretty much the same kind of thing done for yours, except you're using um, splines. And then as far as my um, update my target point is concerned, this just fires back over here. But then this does the magic in here, so there's a bit of a delay, and then it checks uh, the current target point, and I run an increment, I update it. And if I'm more than the number of target points, then I want to go back to zero. Otherwise, I can just exit this and then update it. Um, I'm not going to worry about this. This isn't doing anything. That's just debug. Okay, so this is very simple for that. And there's no boundary box. You can see there's no boundary in this one. For the other one, if I go to my other platform, this one does have a boundary box. Okay. And then once I hit this boundary, all I'm doing is I'm checking the player. So most of this is the same. Uh, the difference is I'm starting. Um, off of the begin play. So here's begin play. All I'm doing is grabbing my target points. Um, and then I wait to start my ride. And then I'm still using the same update for my target points. It's over here. Um, but the big difference is down here. So the moment I overlap, I cast my player and I store him in a variable. And then I set some, uh, some booleans. So I have a thing that checks if I'm on board. And then I also check to see if the ride has started and if my ride is finished. 
and then I hit my start ride, which is up here. This is what starts my uh, chain. So then on tick, uh, if you want to lock the player's position to the other object, you'd have to do it on tick. Because the position of the cabin is changing, you would have to update the position of um, the player as well. So I'm doing off of tick. I'm checking to see if the ride has been started or if it's been finished, because I don't want this to fire if either of these two are not um, viable. I check to see if the player target is valid, because if we don't have a player, we don't want to update. And then I'm just taking my player's position, so here's my player, I'm taking his position, and because I care, I don't want my player to sink into the floor, I'm storing the Z position here, and then I'm taking the platform position, X and Y, because those are what's going to change for me, and I'm having those update over here. So my player X and Y position is going to be the cabins, but the Z position is going to be the players, because otherwise he'd sink into the floor. And I'll show you that. I'll go ahead and just plug this one in. And if I jump in, it locks me, but it's going to try to sink me into the floor there. You see that? So I'm kind of stuck until the ride's done. And then and my ride, the ride actually lets me go on the third target point. I don't have it waiting to zero. Okay, so that's why I'm doing my Z value here. Okay, and then if you care about how this is working, the only thing I changed inside of here is I have a check to see if the ride is finished, and then I update now the ride being finished so that it can start over again. But that's that's pretty much it though. So you really don't have to do anything special. Um, to lock the player to another object that's in motion, unless um, you want to disable control. But anyway, hopefully this answers your question, and I shall see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for checking out my channel. Misty and I both thank you. If you enjoyed that video you just watched, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. And if you have suggestions for other videos, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. I may get to them one of these days, you know. But until then, I shall see you next time.